Today, we will be ranking every melee from easiest to hardest in The War Within. To be considered easy, a spec needs to have what we call an effort to reward ratio, essentially a low skill floor. To determine this, we'll focus on four main factors. First up, rotation. Your sustained rotation is the core of what you're doing in Arena, but the real question is, how much brain power or effort does it take to manage it? Are you required to juggle multiple buffs and debuffs, constantly forced to make micro decisions on whether to press X over Y, or are you just playing whack-a-mole with whatever button lights up on your action bar? Next, win conditions. How much effort does it require for a spec actually to win a round of shuffle? Take Fury Warrior vs Subtlety Rogue. For Fury, you apply constant relentless pressure until you eventually brute force a win with your overwhelming damage. Whereas on Sub, you've got to manage diminishing returns, offensive cooldowns, crowd control, and your opponent's defensives. I know which one's harder. Then we have Team Interaction. The more you have to be aware of in an arena match, the more challenging the spec becomes. For example, does the spec require you to keep an eye on your party frames to use utility or off healing at critical moments? Do you need to coordinate with your team to set up damage or control? Or can you just mindlessly tunnel a nameplate and occasionally glance at your own health bar and do just as well? Finally, there's survivability. The first question is, does the spec frequently get focused in arena? The more you have to think defensively, the harder the spec becomes. Then if so, how does it survive? Are you passively durable and able to soak damage without much thought? Do you need to proactively use defensives? And with our criteria out of the way, if you're watching this video looking for a new spec to play in the War Within, why not start one with the guarantee that you will gain at least 400 rating? Otherwise, you get your money back, no questions asked. As this expansion, we here at Skillcapped have worked alongside some of the best players in the world. We're talking big name streamers, AWC competitors, even BlizzCon champions, all with one goal in mind to teach you, yes, you, exactly how to play your chosen spec in Arena, breaking down the rules behind sustained rotation, offering a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to do the highest burst damage possible, exploring the goals and win conditions through the lens of a rank one player on your chosen spec, and so, so much more. So quit waiting around and join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. There's everything to gain and nothing to lose, but for now, let's get back to the video. To start, let's cover Frost Death Knight. When it comes to rotation alone, Frost DK has always been and continues to be in the War Within one of the most straightforward and intuitive specs, with the core revolving around three buttons, Frost Strike, Obliterate, and Howling Blast. With when to use which being a lot like whack-a-mole, the button will glow and you get a power aura to the side or above our character, you hit the corresponding bind, otherwise just press Frost Strike. Simple enough, but remember, we need to think about our other criteria. This is because as a Frost DK, you're never really going to win games with just sustained damage alone. In fact, it barely matters. The real complexity of the spec comes into play with its win conditions. The key with Frost DK is to play around your cooldowns, not only just pressing them at the right time, but setting them up perfectly, with the goal being to stack as many targets as possible. Grip one or even two enemies in, blind them, then drop death and decay and pop all your cooldowns, chaining stuns and silences to lock down your opponents while cleaving them all at once. And it's this one very short window where practically every ounce of your power comes from. With so much hinging on such a small window and so many factors involved, including an added reliance on your teammates to coordinate with you, executing it properly is easier said than done, especially at higher ratings, where you will face better players who not only understand this win condition, but also actively work to counter it. On top of this, Frost DK's passive defense is relatively weak, especially against melee, so it heavily relies on kiting between setups and can't really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most other melee specs. So in order to truly succeed, you need to make very calculated defensive decisions and spend the majority of the game avoiding damage. As such, despite having an easy rotation, Frost DKs are without a doubt more complex compared to a lot of other melee specs out there. All in all, we think they slot nicely into hard. But with that in mind, there's definitely an argument for them to drop down a tier depending on your rating. Unholy DK is shaping up to be the more meta of the two specs. Some things never change, but many players think it's more difficult to play. Are they right? Historically, if you were to just go by rotation alone, the answer would be yes. Unholy DK primarily does damage by maintaining their diseases on multiple targets, which is done via Outbreak, then using a combination of Festering Strike among other passives to build Festering Wounds on a target, to then pop them with Scourge Strike, spending Runic Power and Sudden Doom procs on Death Coil. While this, granted, isn't overly complicated, there's still a certain level of both debuff and buff maintenance, especially with Plaguebringer. That said, the main challenge of the spec comes from how it wins games. See, Unholy Death Knight is all about your opener. It's here you stack cooldowns like Unholy Assault, Dark Transformation, Raise Abomination, and Apocalypse. 
Although, sequencing these cooldowns got a lot easier in The War Within due to abilities like Unholy Blight and Dark Transformation being merged. Unlike a lot of offensives in WoW, none of these really do any big upfront immediate damage. They're more so just complements to your already high consistent pressure. And it's learning how to leverage this extended window of pressure in order to actually close out games where the true difficulties come into play. As to do this properly and master Unholy Decay, it requires you to manage and juggle your abundance of micro CC both in order to maintain momentum offensively and to also slow down the pace of the game defensively when needed. That in mind, although it might sound more challenging, you're still far less reliant on these windows than Frost DK are with theirs. Then in terms of defense, Unholy is slightly more durable thanks to the Rider of the Apocalypse Tree, which provides a bit more passive durability. However, even then, since most of DK's mitigation is geared towards magic damage, you still need to be good at avoiding damage and kiting melee to stay alive when focused. The key difference is that with consistent damage from your diseases, you're less punished for doing so. All things considered, factoring in aspects like pet management and a slightly more complex rotation, we believe Unholy is still roughly the same difficulty as Frost DK, just for entirely different reasons. So it goes into the hard tier. Demon Hunter has gained a reputation over the years as being one of the easiest melee in the game, but does this hold true in The War Within? The short answer? Yes. From a rotation standpoint, it continues to be one of, if not the easiest specs out there. Doing damage on a DH is just very easy, and I don't think anybody, even DH players themselves, would disagree with that. However, that said, they're slightly more nuanced depending on the hero talent tree you choose in The War Within. For example, as Aldrachi Reaver, you'll need to carefully manage when and on who you apply the Reaver's Mark passive to, while also timing Reaver's Glaive to sync with your burst windows. On the other hand, Felsguard stays closer to the DH playstyle from Dragonflight. Aside from a bit of buff management with when you use Sigil of Flame due to Student of Suffering, it feels almost like a carbon copy of the previous iteration, just with some free added damage on top. And as always, you can't neglect the fact that Demon Hunters have some of the highest and easiest mobility to manage out of any melee. As for other criteria, the win conditions of DH are just as straightforward. Do high damage, play around your essence break and I beam windows, and create as much pressure during your big meta as you possibly can, ensuring as well that you use your instant CC during one of these two windows or whenever you have high pressure. Where the slight complexity comes into play with DH though is how they look to survive, primarily against melee, as inherently, although surprisingly, DH isn't actually all that durable. Instead, you're required to be very proactive with how you use your defensive toolkit. And this is right here where the top demon hunters are able to stand out from the rest of the pack. Things like pre-blurring, pre-nether walks to avoid death, and even glimpsing to immune important CC damage and stuns. But at the end of the day, the simplicity of the demon hunter is what truly carries, and despite not being the strongest melee right now, Havoc is definitely deserving of an easy ranking. On the flip side, our next spec, Feral Druid, has widely been considered one of the hardest melee to play, but there's been a lot of changes since then. As prior to the War Within, the entire playstyle of Feral revolved around landing Cyclones in order to burst with Feral Frenzy, all thanks to Wild Attunement, which resulted in an incredibly constrictive, almost pseudo-caster type playstyle. Luckily though, this has since changed, and Wild Attunement has been removed entirely, which let's just say I don't think anybody is sad about. As a result, Feral Druid's approach to dealing damage has shifted, giving the spec more fluidity and flexibility. You got a mix of dot damage, which involves managing bleed and debuff uptime, and even snapshotting. Then there are micro burst windows, where you briefly focus on high single target and setup damage. And depending on your hero talent tree, you may even have one shot potential to work with. In fact, how you deal damage as a feral is so involved that we ended up covering not one, not two, but five different burst sequences in our brand new feral damage course, which is available now over on our website. And this is all neatly packaged into the toolkit of a hybrid DPS, who is able to support their team with unrivaled control and some very modest utility and off healing. But even with the removal of Wild Attunement, Cyclone still plays a very pivotal role in how you win games. And as you can probably imagine, casting on a melee who is often going to be the one being trained every game, well, just isn't anywhere as easy as just pressing some instant CC whenever you have pressure. Defensively, Feral's received a talent tree overhaul in The War Within, with additions like Oak Skin to enhance Bark Skin and Survival Instincts, along with new hero talents to help increase their overall durability. Together, these changes definitely make the spec less punishing to play compared to last expansion. But even so, with Feral still frequently being targeted in Arena, and the need to expertly juggle your time between Bear and Cat form means they remain one of, if not the most challenging spec to play defensively. So with one of the biggest barriers to entry out of any melee spec in the game right now, Feral Druid rightfully slots straight into our hardest tier. 
Up next, we have Survival Hunter. There always seems to be a monumental difference between a good and a bad Survival Hunter, and it's only really the same handful of players having success with it. But why? The standard damage rotation isn't too complex. Sure, there's some nuances behind how you burst with deciding when to use or when to hold your explosive shot stacks. But ultimately, as a whole, dealing damage isn't too challenging. Even the win conditions are fairly straightforward. You focus on dealing high sustained damage and play around the cooldown of your freezing trap to leverage that pressure. Then moving over to survivability, survival saw some massive buffs this expansion to survival of the fittest, making them one of the most durable melee in the game right now. Here's the thing though, fundamentally, survival hunter is not only one of the most unique specs in the game, but it also has one of, or well to be honest, the most extensive kits out of any spec in the game which in itself presents a set of challenges unlike any other melee. Concepts like learning when you can or can't afford to be in melee range, understanding which CC to use, when to use it, and for what purpose, managing and juggling when and who to use your team utility on. Even for mobility, sure, you have access to a fair amount with disengage and harpoon, but again, your mobility isn't only used for uptime. Something as simple as using a harpoon can involve a decision-making process more complex than the entire beast mastery spec as a whole. No offense. Survival Hunter just demands such a high level of decision making and game knowledge that it's no wonder why only a few players succeed with it each season. And going back to our effort versus reward ratio, given that you could achieve the same rewards with less effort by just respecing marksmanship, well, there's no wonder it falls into our very hard tier. Moving on, we have Windwalker Monk. In a previous expansion, Windwalker monks had to adopt a hit and run playstyle similar to Subtlety Rogues, constantly weaving in and out of melee range to set up big burst windows with serenity every minute and then kiting in between. In The War Within, this has changed slightly and Windwalker monks have shifted away from the hit and run playstyle to more of a bruiser approach. This shift primarily results from the removal of both Serenity and Kiefer's Skyreach, which has pushed the spec toward a higher sustained damage profile using Storm, Earth, and Fire, which is also now easier to use since it's no longer affected by crowd control or roots. The difficulty of playing a Windwalker Monk lies somewhere between two extremes. On one hand, there's Subtlety Rogue, squishy with low sustained damage and reliant on setups and kiting. On the other, Fury Warrior, durable and focused on consistent damage throughout the game without much thought defensively. Windwalker Monk blends these elements. It's relatively tanky with ample defensive options, but still requires you to occasionally kite. It delivers solid sustained damage while also still requiring some additional thought for how you're going to set up your burst. So even though the spec requires a bit of finesse, the War Within playstyle of Windwalker fits perfectly into that middle ground. Retribution Paladin, on the other hand, has always been considered a beginner-friendly melee. And this is a trend that will definitely continue in the War Within. First up, damage. Ret Paladin has one of the most intuitive builder spender systems out of any spec in the game. You build up Holy Power via Judgment, Blade of Justice, and Hammer of Wrath, and then spend it on Final Verdict. Simple, easy to understand, hard to mess up. With the addition of Radiant Glory tying Avenging Wrath to Wake of Ashes, and Wake of Ashes being crucial for unlocking both the Templar and Herald of the Sun hero talents, However, overall, setting up your burst and understanding your win conditions couldn't be any more straightforward. Oh, and the best part? You may as well just be a caster, as you can do your entire damage rotation from range, meaning managing your mobility is a non-issue. Even defensively, retribution feels simple. Getting hit? Pop Shield of Vengeance. Getting hit while stunned? Pop Divine Protection. Getting hit and dangerously low? Divine Shield. Honestly, from a design standpoint, ret is made to be beginner friendly, and there's nothing wrong with that. But, and there's always a but, while Rhett is indeed beginner friendly, it isn't necessarily the easiest spec. Hear me out. With its offensive toolkit being overly simplified, Rhett requires you to focus on the true complexity and learning curve of the spec, mastering your utility. Quick sanks, clutch off heels, and perfectly timed bops, not to mention all the keybinds involved in order to do this optimally. And it's due to this reliance on utility, an aspect that many players struggle with, that we're placing retribution in our easy tier. That said, as you climb higher, it's going to be these simplicities that make the spec harder to execute. Now it's time to cover each rogue spec one by one, starting with Assassination. Rogues as a whole underwent a significant rework in The War Within. With the exception of Subtlety, each spec lost Shadow Dance and gained two charges of Vanish, along with an extended duration on Subterfuge to compensate. These changes, along with quality of life improvements like Serrated Bone Spike becoming passive and the addition of Indiscriminate Carnage back in 10.2, have made maintaining both your Empowered and Regular Bleeds much easier this expansion, though there's still a bit of buff and debuff management involved. Among all three rogue specs, Assassination has by far the most straightforward win condition. Keep your dots rolling and use Kidney Shot more or less on cooldown. Then you capitalize on Deathmark, King's Bane, and Shiv to spike your damage during your Kidney. 
and to be completely honest, creating pressure as an assassination rogue doesn't require much effort. You tunnel a target, apply bleeds, and everything sort of just passively cleaves. However, it's everything aside from dealing damage where assassination can start to ramp up in difficulty, especially when it comes to crowd control and survivability. Playing assassination is like having the rogue experience, just with the training wheels still on. You have all the tools available, but you'll never really be able to fall. In turn, this makes Assassination one of the easiest specs to pick up and perform well on, at least at a basic level, but if you take the time to truly master the spec and the intricacies of playing Rogue, it becomes incredibly rewarding. So with that in mind, we're placing it in the moderate tier. Moving on, up next we have Outlaw Rogue. Outlaw is to rogues what survival is to hunters. It's that niche spec that will pop up and perform well at high ratings, but you'll only ever see it piloted by the same dedicated group of players each season. When it comes to damage, it's easily one of the most intricate specs to master. Between managing roll of bones, timing your crack shot windows, dealing with shorter global cooldowns, and handling all the extra cooldown reduction, it can quickly feel overwhelming even for veterans of the game. And not only does it demand high APM, but there are tons of procs, buffs to maintain, and constant decision making involved, even with just your sustained rotation. The toughest part though, and something often overlooked, is that there really aren't any clear cut win conditions. Sure, you of course have blind, but even though killing spree received a damage buff in the War Within, Outlaw still lacks that, okay, I'm going to press this button and deal big damage now moment, if that makes sense at all. Which means instead, Outlaw is forced to play more so around doing consistent pressure and controlling the pace of the game with its excessive mobility and crowd control tools, in turn making it also quite reliant on teammates to succeed. Which is testament to why it typically does better in a few select compositions in rank 3v3 rather than inside of shuffle. But ultimately, for the sheer amount of effort you need to invest into playing Outlaw, even at a basic level, the reward simply doesn't match up. And that's why we're placing Outlaw firmly in our very hard tier. And that brings us to Subtlety, which usually on these types of lists always ends up being on the hardest tier possible. Is this a fair assessment? Well, let's find out. Starting with damage, Subtlety Rogue has always been about intricate setups and playing around cooldowns like Shadow Dance. While this core aspect remains, the War Within has made the spec much more accessible. As with two charges of Shadow Dance, two charges of Vanish, constant cooldown reduction from deepening shadows, and buffs to invigorating Shadow Dust and Subterfuge, it means despite still being reliant on setups, you're essentially able to do a setup whenever you want, and all you really need to care about is diminishing returns. In fact, as you're able to burst so frequently, coupled with additional like corrupt the blood in the death stalker tree you're able to just keep your foot on the gas and maintain consistent pressure even in some cases doing more sustained damage than specs like havoc dh which is just absurd the main hurdle with damage though is mastering your burst sequences that's why our brand new subtlety rogue damage course focuses on teaching you multiple variations of both openers and burst sequences helping you nail down the fundamentals Anyway, on the topic of Deathstalker, this is definitely one of the more involved hero talent trees out there due to the combination of Deathstalker's Mark and Darkest Knight, which changes not only how you want to be approaching openers, requires you to manage and track your stacks, but also provides another damage amp that you'll be wanting to try and play around. Overall, the true challenge of subtlety isn't just damage, survivability, or even coordinating your setups, it's the fact that by simply playing the spec, you become the center of attention. You inherently become the main character, everyone in the arena is focused on you. The enemy team tries to predict and counter your moves, trading cooldowns in response to yours, while your allies also need to play around and off the decisions you're making. Subtlety has so many tools, burst damage, and control that it can only be described as game warping. And with such a profound impact on the outcome of a game, it's clear why subtlety remains one of the hardest specs to master. Next up is Enhancement Shaman, which was honestly one of the hardest specs to rank. The challenge with Enhancement isn't necessarily its difficulty in play, but rather its struggle to make a significant impact. Now yes, there are some huge changes coming to Enhancement in patch 11.0.5, but even then, the spec either needs to have massively overtuned damage or some form of reliable crowd control added into its kit. As without, and still having no access to any type of healing reduction, while also relying on off healing for its niche, especially in a bracket like Solo Shuffle, you're just constantly at the mercy of the lobby. On top of that, Enhancement is one of the squishiest melee specs in the game, paired with some of the weakest mobility. This makes it difficult not only to maintain uptime to begin even building pressure, but also to escape danger effectively. Combine this with the extensive utility and excessive keybinds required for optimal play, and you're left with a significant barrier to entry, and a very low reward to effort ratio. But who knows, all this could change come 11.0.5. Until then, we'll be slotting enhancement into our hard tier. Let's wrap things up with Warriors, starting with what is often considered the more difficult of the two. 
ARMS definitely has a bit more responsibility than Fury. While both specs share a similar toolkit and have fairly simple damage rotations, ARMS is typically seen more as a pseudo support spec, having a bit more utility overall while being slightly less punchy on the damage front. With the main difficulty of the spec being learning and understanding how to actually build pressure, which is a skill in itself and why there is often a very big gap between what you would consider a good and a bad ARMS warrior. It's the little things like target selection, swapping around based off positioning, knowing when you can or can't follow a target, those type of things, coupled with how well you can leverage your stuns, fear, and sharpened blade to actually close out games. Is it a hard spec? Well, at its core, not really. In fact, ARMS is about as straightforward and vanilla as it gets. Run in, pick a target, pop your cooldowns, and hit Bladestorm. There's just other specs out there that can do the same, but just much better, and with a lot less other responsibilities. And it's for that reason we'll be slotting ARMS into our moderate tier. That brings us to Fury Warrior, and oh boy, if you're looking for an easy melee to pick up for the War Within, this is about as good as it's going to get. Fury is the quintessential brain off Zug Zug melee with one of the most clear and defined playstyles. Gates open, you pick a target, lock onto that nameplate, and then hit buttons to build rage, spend it on rampage, and use cooldowns when they become available. Not only is Fury just fundamentally easy, it's also currently without a doubt one of the strongest specs as a whole. Now, I don't know about you, but one of the worst feelings when playing any melee is when it feels like you have no real impact. You're on a squishy caster from start to finish, hitting them non-stop, but they just don't seem to ever really lose health. Well, Fury Warrior couldn't be further away from this reality. And although the current power level of the spec isn't necessarily a metric we like to use to judge if something is easy or hard, in this case, it's something you just can't ignore, as one thing that's often underestimated is how much easier the game begins to feel just as a whole whenever you're the one in the driving seat. As now, not only does Fury's sustained damage feel incredibly impactful, perhaps even a bit too impactful, but it also has strong burst potential, especially now with the addition of Bladestorm. Funnily enough, historically, the one difficult part of Fury Warrior has always been learning to understand when you need to stop the Zug Zug and switch gears entirely. But to be completely honest with you, at the time of making this, the less you think about, the more effective you're going to be. If you drop low, hit and rage regeneration or rallying cry, and aside from that, you just keep your foot on the gas. And that's why Fury Warrior, without even a second thought, will be going straight into a tier of its own. And with that, on screen now, you'll see every melee ranked from easiest to hardest in the War Within. If you're wanting to get started and rank up fast on any of the classes we covered today, check out our brand new website at skillcap.com. Our guides are designed to get you ahead by teaching the fundamentals that actually carry an arena. We've even leveled up our revolutionary add-on, which with the click of a button can give you the number one UI for PvP in just a number of seconds. So to get started with everything you need in the new expansion, be sure to check out the exclusive offer below and learn how you can gain 400 rating risk-free. For now though, that's going to be it for us. See you soon and good luck in the new season.